Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the mysterious story behind the latest mascot horror game, Garden of Ban Ban. While short and fairly simple in its narrative, there are several secrets hidden throughout the game's brief runtime, secrets I myself missed during my playthrough. In this video, I will be implementing those secrets in a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the game, and using the information gathered from them to theorise as to the greater story Ban Ban is trying to tell. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into this episode of Horror Games Explained. Garden of Ban Ban begins with this ominous shot of a computer room. While observing this room, we are given a few lines of text which set up the basic premise of the story. Our protagonist is a parent looking for their missing child, and time is a delicate matter for them. Clicking on the clock icon advances time, and it is interesting to note the change in audio and background imagery as we do so. Keep an eye on the doorway and listen to the audio alter as time ticks on. We notice several changes as we advance time. The first is the audio of children playing. Garden of Ban Ban is set in a kindergarten, and so the sound of children is to be expected. However, as time ticks on, the sound stops. The daycare falls silent, and a number of changes occur to the environment. Firstly, at 12pm we see a hammer and wood appear to the left of the image. Then, at 1pm, the doors open and a note appears on the desktop. We then jump to 2pm and observe a bloodstain on the far wall. Something bad happened here, and it seems we are stepping into the shoes of a parent investigating exactly what that something was. We arrive in the lobby of Ban Ban's kindergarten to discover no staff are in attendance and no kids anywhere to be seen. Everything is eerily quiet. On the nearby wall is a painting containing all six kindergarten mascots. These are Jumbo Josh, a giant green monster whose tagline is, eat vegetables and fruits to become strong like me. Bambolina, a white cat creature who says, kindness is free, so sprinkle it everywhere. Ban Ban, her counterpart and the titular character of the game. Ban Ban can be quoted saying, sharing is caring, your pancreas is mine. This line alone shows something odd is afoot at this particular daycare. Next up is the Apilla Bird. Their tagline is, laughter is the best medicine, so make sure to smile. Then we have the gorilla-like Captain Fiddles, who simply says, ooga booga, booga ooga. And finally, Stinger Flynn, a jellyfish who says, having many arms allows me to help a lot more people. These are the presumably animatronic mascots who roam the daycare and interact with children and staff in attendance, but once again, none are to be seen. The protagonist finds a keycard at the reception desk and quickly puts it to use, unlocking a nearby maintenance room where they discover a useful tool key to progressing through the building, a drone. Though this drone requires batteries for the remote control in order to operate. Also in this room is a note, which seems to have been written by a young child. It reads, Dear Mommy, I am hiding in a room, but I have to fight the monster. It is the only chance to make Claire like me. A crudely drawn picture shows the child in question wielding a knife against a monster that resembles the Apilla Bird, while another child called Claire sits behind it. After reading the note, we make our way to the cafeteria, where both batteries can be found sitting on tabletops. After taking them back to the drone and powering it up, we can then issue commands with the remote control to fly it into two red buttons in the lobby, this opening the main doors to the daycare. As the protagonist makes their way inside, they notice the Apilla Bird is watching them from behind a pillar, though it quickly darts back inside its room. Before following the Apilla Bird, we take in the larger room. This is the creativity area, a place where children would sit at tables and get creative. In one corner of the room is the naughty corner, 
and a red button we cannot yet access, as the surrounding glass is not breakable. A worrying message on the whiteboard at the far side of a room reads, The end is here. This telling us that staff witnessed something atrocious unfold in this very room. With the doors locked and nowhere else to go, the parent enters the Pillar Bird's playroom. Here we find the mascot itself, sat, beak open, at the far side. A disclaimer reads, A Pillar Bird Mission. A Pillar Bird is unbelievably hungry. Feed it six eggs to get your prize. The nearby ball pit room is closed and boarded up by planks of wood. Thinking back to the intro screen, you will recall the appearance of a hammer and two planks of wood. So this is where those items were put to use. But why? With no way to enter the ball pit, our hapless hero navigates the nooks and crannies of the playroom in search of six eggs. Upon locating all six, we head back to the pillar bird and feed it said eggs. This causes the bird to cough up a keycard, which can then be used on the control panel in the naughty corner. This control panel changes the colour of the glass, for whatever reason, and allows the drone to break through and hit that red button. This button opens a safe behind the reception desk, which holds the aforementioned hammer and a mysterious note that simply reads, Distraction at 1. Again, if we think back to the intro screen and remember the time skip on the clock, you will recall how the 1 o'clock hour was skipped completely and afterwards we notice blood on the outside wall. It seems whatever monstrous event occurred here was the result of a nefarious scheme cooked up by certain workers at the kindergarten. These workers arranging for a distraction at 1pm so they could carry out something dastardly unnoticed. Hammer in hand, we return to the boarded up ball pit room and manage to break through the planks of wood and gain entry. We can see the footprints of the pillar bird on the wall, suggesting it is guarding something deep down in the darkness below. A lift system allows our parental protagonists to make their way to the other side of the pit and it is here we are able to solve a simple puzzle, matching the colours on the buttons up with their respective mascots. However, before completing this puzzle, instead collect a very well hidden egg perched atop this ceiling fixture. By collecting this egg and then taking it back to the pillar bird, we are awarded with a keycard. This keycard then grants us access to a previously inaccessible room off the main hallway, a room that looks eerily familiar. This computer room is in fact the room seen in black and white during the intro sequence. It seems that whatever caused his animatronic mascot to turn feral originated from a command line sent from the computers in this room, a command sent during a distraction at 1pm. The note we spotted during the intro can also be picked up, and it is revealed to be a boarding pass belonging to one Weatherly Mason, a flight leaving from Montreal to Madrid on the 23rd of October 2016. If we scan the QR code, we are taken to a song by the Peacemaker Project titled It Really Hurts. The song itself may not be important, but the words It Really Hurts suggest something sinister. Mascots attacking the staff and children of the facility after receiving a signal to turn them rogue. And it seems Weatherly Mason may have been the one to send this signal. We now make our way back to the ball pit room and complete the puzzle inside, which grants us access to a locked storeroom. The room contains another keycard and a handwritten note. Again, this note seems to be written by a child. It reads, I alone. I want to play with a whole bird, but everyone left me. Everyone had a party without me. Miss Mason see me, but go. I am scared because hole is loud and my friends scream in it, but bird is funny. If we break down the note line by line, we can garner vital information about the secret story of Garden of Bam Bam. The note appears to be written by the last remaining child at the daycare. They say that everyone left them, and then go on to repeatedly mention a hole, the pillar bird, and their friends screaming in said hole. This suggests that the other children were imprisoned within the ball pit hole and then guarded by the pillar bird explaining the footprints on the wall and the bird being referenced in the note several times. We also see an adult mentioned, one Miss Mason. Thinking back to the boarding pass found in the locked room, it belonged to Weatherly Mason, the suspect responsible for implied events that transpired here. Miss Mason left the kid alone and defenseless, confirming her malicious intent. 
After uncovering these troubling revelations, the chairlift starts back up, and to our horror, the Apilla Bird makes its way across the pit. The protagonist must quickly activate the drone to hit a red button. This activating a moving plate that slides across the surface of the pit, allowing them to make a mad dash for the other side, and quickly hitting the emergency stop button. This drops the floor and sends the Apilla Bird in hot pursuit, hurtling into the depths of a pit, presumably to its demise. It seems the children are no longer imprisoned here, and so we press on. This is where the final secret of the game can be discovered. If we backtrack and return to the cafeteria, we find a cassette and tape player have been left for us, though who left them remains a mystery. Playing the tape reveals the following disturbing audio. The sounds of children screaming and machinery breaking are heard. This will make sense very soon, but for now confirms our suspicions as to the fate of the young ones under the care of the kindergarten staff. Heading back down the main hallway allows us to use that final keycard to enter the locked door at the far end. Inside this room we find another boarding pass, this time belonging to Uffman Adam. What's interesting about this pass is the destination, time, date, and seat number. They are all a perfect match for Weatherly Mason. These two were travel companions, suggesting they plotted together and were the two responsible for all hell breaking loose at the kindergarten. Their business trip to Madrid is in some way connected to these events. If we scan this code then we are taken to another secret left by the developers. It is a secret message which reads as follows. Congratulations, you've made it to the Jumbo Josh Lounge. This is where Jumbo Josh and his siblings come to rest. Uninvited guests are typically turned to mush, but you seem to have put a lot of effort into reaching this place. Hereby you may stay as long as you like, put on some relaxing music, have some cake, and make some friends. This seems to be nothing more than a simple easter egg, so we'll leave it at that. Back to the room and we locate a hidden button beneath this desk, which powers up a red button. Hitting this button with a drone activates a switch, and when flipped, this switch reveals a secret compartment underneath the floorboards. An elevator rises up from the dark depths below. The elevator appears damaged. Now think back to that audio recording and this makes sense. It seems the children were moved to a secret area beneath the main daycare though during their descent, something attacked and damaged the machinery. By taking the elevator down, we soon discover who this attacker was, a terrifying version of Jumbo Josh. The green monster rises up from the darkness and drags both us and the elevator down into the unknown depths. And this is where Garden of Banban concludes. Though the game is quick to mention a part 2 is in the works, which will expand the story of this world and its ambiguous narrative in the months to come. But for now that brings us to the end of today's video and a look at the story and secrets of Garden of Banban. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did remember to leave a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.